Hey friends, it's so good to see you today. And I am so glad you could join us for our RAs and GAs tonight. We have an amazing missionary to learn about, and best of all, we get to hear straight from him what he does and how he's impacting people by listening to God's calling on his life. Tonight, I want us to start by looking at our monthly virtue of the month and also our monthly verse. And after that, we're going to dig right in and learn about Mr. Mike and how he's pastoring several churches and leading people to Jesus. So, our virtue of the month is honesty. Honesty is to tell the truth, respect others, and play fair. Let's say that together. Three, two, one. Honesty. Honesty is to tell the truth, respect others, and play fair. You know, it's really good even to think about honesty not just applying to the words we say, but the actions that we are showing others. Whether that's as simple as, you know, following the rules in a game, or by the way we treat others. Our memory verse this month is Matthew 9, 13. Go and learn what this means. I want mercy and not sacrifice. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to follow me. And that's right from the mouth of Jesus. He was telling people what God had sent him to do. Just like he sends missionaries and even sends us not to go get those that are right with God, but to go find people who have sinned in their life that need Jesus to forgive them. So let's say that verse together. Three, two, one. Matthew 9, 13. Go and learn what this means. I want mercy and not sacrifice. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to follow me. Matthew 9, 13. So now I want us to dig right in to our missionary of the month. And that's Mike and his wife, Michelle Palmer. They live in Idaho, and they live in the middle of nowhere. Mike actually likes to tell people that the nearest Walmart is three hours away. So imagine having to get a, a lot of groceries and driving three hours there, three hours back, plus all the time it takes to shop at Walmart. How crazy is that, that Mike lives that far in the middle of nowhere? And he lives there on purpose because God has sent him to a place where people like to be alone. And it's his job to try to reach those people with the gospel so that they can know about the truth of who Jesus is and how much he loves them. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to listen right from Mike about what he does and watch our missionary video of the month. Let's check this out together. I'm Mike Palmer. I'm the pastor of Limhigh River Cowboy Church, Salmon Valley Baptist Church over my shoulder towards town a few miles. And I just want to welcome you west. You're in the heart of the Intermountain West here in Tindoy, Idaho. 22 years ago, myself, my wife, and our son, who was starting high school at the time, moved to Salmon, Idaho to pastor Salmon Valley Baptist Church. And about 12 years ago, I had the privilege of uh, planting Limhi River Cowboy Church, still at the church in town, but planting Limhi River Cowboy Church, which is just down the road here about a mile. Salmon is a unique place. Uh, it's the most remote county seat in the lower 48 states. That means we're three hours from Walmart, three hours from McDonald's, not a lot of Baptist churches between here and there either. Kind of out in the middle of nowhere and conveniently that way. Um, our community We've got Salmon proper, the city. It's the county seat for Limhigh County. And uh, there's a few thousand people live there. And then the remainder of the county kind of scattered out in rural and uh, really remote uh, part of, of central Idaho. The vibe and the feel of our community, what our community is like um, in town, it's a typical small town. We've got the grocery stores, we've got the convenience stores and the gas stations, and we've got a few churches sprinkled around. There's about four Christian churches in town. And uh, then the rest of the county is pretty much ranching. That's, a, that's the vast majority of what we do. The Limhi Valley, um, where we are right now, is about 50 to 60 miles stretch of the road there and, and primarily cattle ranches up and down that valley. One of the stories that is just in the past couple of years, it's kind of cool to tell. Um, I'm out hunting one morning and it's, it's a pretty cold morning. It's late in the year and it's well below zero and the hunting was pretty crummy actually that particular morning. And as I started to walk back towards my truck a couple of miles away, um, I realized there's, a, there's a, a guy in the valley with me and I, 
I kind of get closer and I, I knew who he was. He's a trapper and that's what he's doing in the valley there. He's trapping. So I, I walked over his direction and kind of intercepted him there and we're just having a conversation and he goes, uh, he goes, you know, it, 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 it may be intentional that we're seeing each other here. Okay. I didn't really know what that meant, but, uh, he started to tell me about some health problems he had and, and, uh, he's a, he's a, he's an older gentleman. He and his wife and he began to describe those health problems and he he wasn't in a church anywhere he wasn't wasn't actively worshiping jesus anywhere and uh, we just had a phenomenal conversation about jesus we had a phenomenal conversation about lim high river cowboy church we had a conversation about baptism and 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 what it means to follow christ and to follow him in baptism and and uh and and just you know, you're more than welcome at Limhi River Cowboy Church. We're part of your community. You're part of us, and we'd love to have you. And over the course of the next few weeks, he began to show up at church, and a little after that, his wife began to come with him. And and uh, just last summer, uh, right off the hill behind me here in the Limhi River, we had the privilege of baptizing he and his wife together there. And uh, one of the cool things about it too is, after he'd been coming for a few months, he asked me if it was okay or acceptable to ask the church to pray for him and so one night as we were beginning the service we just got him up front and and talked about his health problems and read some scripture and we just gathered around him and prayed for him and uh, he's so excited about every six months to tell us that the doctors are telling me I, I shouldn't be alive and I'm living beyond what they ever anticipated or expected and uh, that guy he and his wife they come to church just with such joy it's just continual joy because they found that family, they found that faith, and they know Christ, and uh, uh, and just to see their fellowship and their relationship with Him, it's it's pretty contagious. It's pretty exciting to see. The bottom line is, people are the same everywhere. They're in a different culture. They're in a different context. Um, they may speak the same language, but they've got a different dialect. They have different affinities. And uh, those people exist in every community. Those people exist in your community. And, and what we found here was we found people who weren't comfortable, who didn't feel like there was a church for them or a place for them. And like I've said, that exists everywhere. And the lesson for all of us is no matter where you live, if you live inner city, you live in a, in a, in a rural community in the south, or if you live uh, uh, in an inner city in the northeast or a suburban city somewhere in the Midwest, there are people around you who are not comfortable. They don't feel like they fit. Your church isn't reaching their culture, doesn't work for their culture. We need to find ways, all of us do, to look at our world, to look at North America as a mission field and find the ways to reach those people who are unchurched, those peoples that are around us that need the gospel of Christ. We're the ones that are gonna take it to them. They're not gonna to come to us. Thank you for taking a few minutes to join us here in Idaho. Thank you for praying for us. Those prayers are so important. And uh, be thinking about how you can be engaging the peoples around you with the gospel of Christ. You know, I love when we can learn about what a missionary is doing right from their mouth. We get to, we get to listen to Mike and, and hear exactly what he does, what God has called him to do, to reach people in Idaho that live in the middle of nowhere. You know, he doesn't live in the middle of nowhere because he wants to. He lives there because God has called him to reach those people. And he's a busy man. He pastors two different churches. And he also helps an entire community of cowboy church plants meet the needs of the communities in both Utah and Idaho. You know, I've really enjoyed learning about Mike and his wife, Michelle, tonight. And, you know, it's incredible the things that God is using him to do. I do want to remind you, attached to this post is an activity sheet that we can use to, to learn more about Mike and learn more about what God's called him to do. Also, I want us to remind us of our verse, and we're going to practice that together. So I'm going to read it once, and then we'll read it once together again. So it's Matthew 9, 13. Go and learn what this means. I want mercy and not sacrifice. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to follow me. Matthew 9, 13. You know, that's exactly what Mike is doing. He's going looking for people who like to be alone, who like to be isolated, and showing them the love of Jesus. Let's say that verse together. Three, two, one. Matthew 9, 13. Go and learn what this means. 
I want mercy and not sacrifice. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to follow me. Matthew 9, 13. You know, next week we're going to really dive in and dig into God's word and we're going to be learning about um, another man that was called. Just like Mike has been called to reach the people in Idaho, we're going to learn about a man named Matthew. Now, Jesus called him to reach people for him. And it's been great to see you tonight. I can't wait for you to, to maybe leave a comment, maybe post answers to the, the activity page, or even ask a question about Mike or about um, the Bible verse or the virtue of the month. I would love to get your input and what you think about what Mike is doing in Idaho. I can't wait to see you again soon. Bye, guys.